Hi everyone, in this lecture I'm going to show you how you can create a simple HTML page. So uh, we have our VS Code open. You're going to go ahead and you're going to create a file. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. These are the first lectures, so I'm going to be a little bit thorough. And then we are going to pick up the pace. So when you click on it, it says a new file. You're going to say two dot. Just provide the name of the file, creating a simple HTML page. Now, uh, for Python, we had .py or .py files. For eHTML, you have .html files. Very simple. I'm going to zoom out again. So let's zoom out. I'm going to zoom it in. There we go. So here is our very first HTML page. Now, um, before uh, going forward, I would like to show you two extensions that I do require you to uh, go ahead and install. I'm going to zoom in a little. So the first one is, is this uh, three extensions, to be accurate. Three extensions. The first one is this bracket pair colorizer. Go ahead and install this one as well. Install this. You're going to need it in the future. Uh, the second one is um, live uh, server. Just go ahead and install live server. Install this. I'm going to show, I'm going to tell you why we need this later in this lecture. That is the second one. And the third one is the prettier code for matter. So again, just to wrap up, we, we had prettier code for matter. Install that. Install live server. And install a bracket pair colorizer. Right, just install these. Uh, the way you can install them is instead of this disable button, you're going to see install. Just click on it and it is basically going to install it. So just go ahead and install all three of those and uh, restart your VS Code. So the way that we can create a simple HTML document is uh, VS Code provides us with a template that we can get started very easily. So you're going to hold Shift and you're going to press 1. And you're going to see that it is Emmet. If you're using another code editor like Sublime Text, Atom, Brackets, Emmet is not going to be pre-installed. Emmet is just going to allow you to write HTML and CSS3 codes very fast because it is going to show you auto-completion. Right, you're going. You can use uh, shortcuts to write to create a website faster. So you can see that it says Emmet abbreviation. You can see we have our doc type. We have our HTML element where the language you have to specify, some browsers do require this, uh, is English. And the, here is the closing tag. Then you have the head element and then you have the body element. What, what is inside of them doesn't matter. What you have is uh, this document type, HTML, heading, and the body. So when you, when you do shift, again, shift and plus one, when you hit enter, this is the simplest uh, HTML web page that you can find. I'm going to explain all parts of this. So if you come here, click on this down arrow, it is going to collapse everything. If you click on it again, it is going to expand everything. So I'm going to collapse that part and this part. So here is our HTML. This is our document type, which is HTML. Language is English. This is our opening tag for HTML element. This is the closing tag for HTML element. I'm going to open up the head element. Inside the head element, we have some metadata. With exactly the same idea that we had in our databases. Metadata provides some data about our HTML web page. And we talked about metadata in the context of SQL or databases, which provided data about our uh, uh, tables and columns and and our about our database itself metadata inside an HTML document refers to an HTML website so you have your character set UTF-8 which basically specifies what kind of um, words and letters you can write so you can write all you can create uh, for example you can write all of the symbols on your keyboard and they will be convert it to some kind of content on the web page. You can write uh, al uh, alphabets, you can write numerics, you can write alphanumeric letters, all the characters, all that good stuff. Then, then we have another meta tag, which basically says that we want the content 
of the Internet Explorer be equal to the Microsoft Edge. This is available. If you remove it, doesn't really matter, but I recommend you keep it here. The third one is basically the most important one. This refers to responsiveness. Responsiveness is one of the major topics in HTML5 and CS3. Uh, you know, like a whole course has to be dedicated to it. So I'm not going to dive very deep into it. I'm just going to tell you what responsiveness is. Responsiveness is uh, any website that looks good on any size, any device with any size. So like you have a laptop, which is 15.6 inches. You have a TV, which is 55 inches. You have a smartphone, with, which is like 6.5 inches. So you can see you have different screen sizes, right? You, when you create a website, you need to keep in mind that your website will be shown on smaller screens and on bigger screens. And it does, it should not break down. The content should not break down. It should look good on all devices. This is basically about that. Right after that, we have the title of this web page. What is the default title? It is a uh, HTML document. I'm going to change this title and I'm going to say creating a simple HTML uh, page. And, and whenever you do changes, you have to do control S just to save them. So this is the head. Inside the head, nothing within the head will ever be shown on the website because that is the job of the body. So everything that you write inside the body will be shown on the website. It doesn't matter what you write inside the head. It, it will never be shown on the website. Now, how can you see this website in the browser? The way that you can see that is just go ahead and right click and say open with live server. Live server is the extension that you previously installed. Just click on it and now it is going to open up a website. Now, uh, you can see the title of the website is creating a simple HTML5 page. And this is the file and this is the port number and this is the, well, the address and the port number where this website is on. So it is local but it is on a web page. So from this lecture onwards, the way that we are going to create this, it is like a little bit time consuming to write HTML elements inside the body and save them and go back to this website, like switching between interfaces. It's a little bit time consuming. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make this smaller and I'm going to put it right here. Let's just go full screen. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to put these side to side, side by side. So we can see our changes live. So there we go. So this is like the ideal way of writing and working with HTML. I'm going to zoom out to this, to this level for the first lectures. Then I'm going to zoom out one more. I'm, I'm sure this is readable because you need to see this entire uh, content of the website so you can content of the HTML elements so you really have this idea of how that works uh, so this is the opening tag this is the ending tag or the closing tag and this entire thing is an HTML element now what does this live server does for us is whenever you change whenever you write anything like you say this is my first website Whenever you write anything, when you save it, you're going to see those changes automatically on the web page. That's how good it is. So that's how, um, that's why Live Server is useful. So you, we do not, we don't, we shouldn't, we don't have to like uh, refresh the page to see our changes. So you can see again, this is a website, and we created that using this document. So you can right click, you can go to inspect. And you can see we have HTML uh, element. In the body, we just have this is my first website. In the head, uh, we have all this stuff. So we do have our title as well, creating a simple HTML page. So, so far, uh, I'm sure you are getting where we are going and what we are doing here. And I'm sure you're liking because HTML is very visual as opposed to other programming languages, especially uh, like, not especially like Python, which is a little bit difficult to show it like in a real world kind of context. But then that is the uh, front end. Front end is easier to work with uh, because it is visual. So you can ch see your changes right away. 
So that's it for this lecture. Uh, in the next lecture onwards, I'm going to try to uh, keep these lectures short, like below three minutes or maximum below five minutes mark because there are like 40 to 50 lectures for html5 and css3 and i do not want to go off topic this is a python course i'm just going to show you the essentials there is always going to be more more things that you can do with html5 and css3 than the content or the topics that i cover here so with this our lecture comes to an end see you in the next one